Next Level Racing's Elite series of cockpits has a new flagship model, the FGT Elite 160. The new big brother to Next Level Racing's previous leading model in the FGT Elite, the 160 version is bigger, bulkier and supposedly better in every way. We're going to give you our experience of using this rig over the past few weeks and tell you whether it's worth the premium price. This rig is designed for a wealthy sim racer or those who are completely committed to getting the most solid and unfiltered sim racing experience. Designed with strong direct drive wheels and heavy pedals in mind, any peripherals less extreme than this would be wasted on this behemoth. This top of the range rig boasts a top of the range price at £1,150 here in the UK or £1,300 for the officially licensed Ferrari edition, both without a seat. For these prices, you would expect near perfection. Let's see if it lives up to this. The Next Level Racing FGT Elite 160 comes in one big box which is extremely heavy. This is the first indication of just how sturdy this rig is set to become. The rig arrived in perfect condition and with every piece tightly and neatly packaged in polystyrene. It's so perfectly packaged in fact that some of the pieces were near impossible to remove without breaking the polystyrene, so make sure you've got a vacuum handy. The build process took me about three and a half to four hours. I built it on the floor, but if you had a table and a friend to help that would make things much easier for you and your joints. The profile tubes are all pre-drilled and threaded to fit perfectly first time. No need for any angle brackets here. The instruction manual from Next Level Racing is excellent and made the build process as seamless as possible. On the manual there is also a QR code which links to the build guide from Next Level Racing themselves, which you can also follow along as you assemble the rig. This is probably the easiest build process I have experienced for an aluminium profile rig and part of the selling point of Next Level Racing's Elite Series rigs. Whilst building, you'll begin to appreciate some of the attention to detail that's gone into the design, starting with the T-nuts themselves. They are far wider and chunkier than any I've seen on a rig before, and this should mean that each bolt, joint and connection is more rigid and secure. They can only be inserted from the end of each profile, but Next Level Racing have you covered and tell you exactly where and how many to add to each extrusion within the instructions. Another very helpful inclusion from Next Level Racing is a ratchet with two hex heads. This makes adding and tightening all the bolts so much easier. However, we would recommend using the standard Allen key to do the final turn of tightening, as our ratchet tool began to slip by the end of the build due to overuse. Other useful accessories in the box included a spirit level and felt pads for contact areas on the seat rails and wheel deck to keep your rig looking $1,000 even after assembly and adjustment. After building, you're just left to adjust to suit your body and desired driving position. The driving position adjustment is of course one of the USPs of the FGT range from Next Level Racing giving you the option to be seated like a GT or single-seater racing car. FGT of course standing for Formula GT. The adjustment options on this rig are extensive and the scope for customization is massive thanks again to the FGT design. Although you can alter the driving position from Formula to GT and anywhere in between, this is not a short drop and will require tools, bolts and not an insignificant amount of time. I would likely be setting this rig to my desired position and then leaving it. I think changing position more than a few times a year would end up becoming tiresome. There should be plenty of adjustment for most people, with scope for the seat height and angle to change, along with pedal angle, height and distance, and finally steering deck distance and height. Making sure everything is square and symmetrical is also made easy by the printed reference lines on the main rails. One of the main strengths of this rig is its sturdiness, and this is in part due to the number of solid connections each section has. The knock-on effect of this, however, is that setting up the rig will be time-consuming due to the steering arms, shift amount and pedal supports all being connected. When one moves, the rest follow. Adjustment of the wheel deck is a little finicky and it jams easily. I highly recommend getting a friend to help here as trying to lift, tilt and tighten two bolts at once is quite tricky. The pedal support plates don't have one correct position, so you'll also have to figure that out based on your chosen seating position and this may take a few tries to get right. The build and adjustment of this rig is only a small part of why you'd buy it. The most important thing about this rig, of course, is what it's like to drive. Let's get to some driving. Initial reactions are it feels completely solid, like I'm getting almost no, in fact, or no appreciable flex. It feels completely rock solid to me. And if I push and pull the wheel, the only flex I can see is in the wheel and then the wheelbase shaft itself. You know, if I give you a demonstration now, if I push and pull on this, there's almost no flex here, side to side as well. That's as much as I can do and almost nothing at all. The wheel deck is made from steel and it's attached to the very, very beefy side pillars. And the side pillars are thicker than even on the FGT. 
If we then think about the pedals as well, you have those two bars which go across, and when I brake, I can't feel any flex whatsoever, and there must be about 60, 70 kilograms pressure pushing at the moment. And you've also got the shift amount to your right-hand side, and I didn't move this from pretty much standard, and it's almost exactly where you'd want it. I don't have a shifter on at the moment because I'm in the IR04 on iRacing. It's just a, a car that you don't need a gear shifter for, but it's right to the right-hand side is where it comes standard. You can put it on the left as well if you want to. And I can imagine this is exactly where you'd want it. You've got left to right movement, you can change the angle and also you can change it, slide it forwards and backwards. And also there's the option to actually mount this shifter unit on the side of your seat. One thing I must say that I really liked about the ne this next level racing FGT Elite 160 rig is the fact that everything is anodized black and the finish is just perfect. I mean, every single part that I got out of the, the box from standard was perfect. And even after I've adjusted a few bits and pieces and uh, made a few changes and slid stuff up and down, it really does look the part. It does hold its color a lot better. And even when you move the steering plate, for example, up and down, it doesn't seem to scuff. So your, your rig will be looking good even after you've adjusted it a few times. This FGT Elite 160 replaces the FGT Elite as the flagship model, but this is just a whole, you know, that extra 10% of stiffness that a lot of you may be wanting, especially if you're going to be putting heavy pedals on, or alternatively, you like running a really stiff brake pedal. But there is one big downside which I definitely don't like about the, uh, the FGT Elite series as a whole, but specifically as well the 160 which we're on now, and that is these steering arms which come up very very high now you might think that you know that's not a massive issue and however the one thing it does affect is where i can place the monitors and you might be able to see from over my shoulder even if i wanted to bring these monitors closer i could only bring them to about here it's not a big issue not a big inconvenience but it's something that you definitely might want to consider and it might be a deal breaker for some people because a lot of people if you're running smaller monitors like 27s or 24s like i am at home you need to bring it closer to get that full wrap round Next Level Racing kindly sent us the ESR2 seat, which is the one I'm using right now, and it works perfectly for this rig in hybrid and GT conditions. You can see that it's a little, got a little bit of flex in the back, but that's to be expected because you can't ri get rid of all the flex in an adjustable seat such as this. This ESR2 seat also comes with adjustable rails, which means you can move the seat backwards and forwards as you please, which is a welcome addition if, for example, you and your friends often jump in and out of your rig. This seat is also very good value. Here in the UK, it's available for about £300. I think 299 is the, the retail price. And for a seat that has, comes with rails, there's an adjustable back, and it's actually very, very comfy with all the lumbar support you need, it's a great option. However, if you're considering putting this rig in the formula seating position, I would highly recommend getting a solid seat like the ES1. We have had the ES1 seat in this rig, and that's a plastic molded seat with foam pads in, and it's much more solid than this ESR2 seat. However, it is a bit pricey. At £449 here in the UK, you can pretty much get a racing seat for that price. There are also some formula seating position seats available from people like Sparco, which can give you a more authentic seating position for, for the likes of a Formula 1 car or Formula 2 or Formula 3. A solid seat like that is also much better for the formula seating position. Reclining seats like this one, they don't do so well in, with your legs too high because you can't change the angle of the bottom of the seat, only the back. And then you end up with not enough support for your legs and your back. This rig is the most solid rig I have used and flex isn't even a consideration here. The build process is as easy as you'll get at this quality and rigidity, and the instructions help make this as pain-free as possible. We think it looks great, and every piece is perfectly finished in anodized black. The Ferrari branded option for an extra £150 is also a very attractive proposition. This rig genuinely allows for a Formula or GT-style driving position, and with almost unlimited tuning possibilities, you're guaranteed to find a position that works for you. Adjustment isn't speedy, however, so no quick pit stops around here. Once driving, the feel is excellent. You feel every detail of the force feedback and even the heaviest of lead feet will be contained. The long steering arms are an inconvenience for triple monitor users and this may be a deal breaker for some. The premium price is balanced by the value added from the attention to detail, overall quality and additional extras that most other rigs don't include. It's the details like the finish, the tools, the cable management and the excellent instructions that justify the cost. Overall, the quality is exactly what you'd expect. It's a truly premium product you won't be disappointed with your purchase. For more hardware reviews, make sure you're subscribed. We have some from Moza and Good Engineering coming soon. Hit the notification bell to make sure you don't miss them.
In the meantime, thanks for watching and keep it pinned.